Hey everyone, it's John from Ride Upstate with the third installment in my electric vehicle. I think this is going to be the last one, this electric vehicle series. I've mentioned in the past how Uber and Lyft and DoorDash, they want to fully electrify their fleets, their fleets, right? They don't own any vehicles, but we get the point. By 2030, 2035, and I just want to talk a little bit about how this will affect drivers in small markets where you're driving a lot of miles. It's a lot different than if you're in a city like Atlanta or Los Angeles or, you know, you name it, New York City. These cities have a lot of supercharging locations and your trips are a lot shorter than, say, for example, here where taking someone to the airport is a 30 to 35 minute drive and it's 20, at least 25 miles from where I live, but you could actually end up driving 50 miles if you're picking someone up from a location a little bit farther north. So I'm gonna switch screens here real quick. This is approximately, this is my kind of zone, if you will, the upstate New York area where I use. I'm on Tesla's website. I'm going to use the Tesla Model 3 as the example. We want to use the best. Um, this is the standard range. We want to use the best example. We want to give the benefit of the doubt. So what you see up here in this northernmost location is a supercharger. And in this location is another supercharger. If you notice over here, it is over 48 miles between superchargers going straight down the highway. That doesn't even include going out here and coming back or things like that. The difficulty with driving in a small market like this where there aren't several superchargers is that it takes a long time to charge an electric vehicle. Now, I think the standard range has about 230 miles of range on the vehicle. If you're at home charging overnight and you have a 220 volt charger, let's take a look here what it says. If you have a wall connector, you get 44 miles of range per hour charged. Okay, so if your car sits for 10 hours, it's going to charge. If your car sits for eight hours, it'll be charged overnight. But you have approximately, right, 200 miles of range, let's say, because we're talking effective range. And in this market, it's easy to drive 200 miles a day. It's easy to drive three or 400 miles a day in this market because everything is so spread out. So you're going to be charging your vehicle during the day and typically the way most charging goes it goes from uh it runs it down to 20 percent and that's when they recommend that you start charging again no one driving an electric vehicle is going to drive around with just 80 miles of range left on it and do ride share right uh, no one is going to go, they might do food delivery, but certainly not ride share with just say 80 miles of range, right? We're saying 200 just to be effective. We're using a 200 mile range as an example. Yes, I know if you have a Model S or a long range model, you're closer to 300. Let's just stick with 200 for now because most people are not going to be able to afford a Tesla. So with 200 miles of range, that means when you're only going to get an effective range of 160 miles. Okay, you can do 160 miles here on this map just by going down and up, that's 80, down again, right, there's 100, and then back up again, 150, and you're out of range. And then you've got to go to a supercharger. Let's say you're just kind of cruising back and forth between here doing rides, you're going to go to a supercharger and it's going to take you 15 minutes to get 200 to get that range back. That's not bad if you're at a supercharger. 
Your other option is to go back home and charge from home or use what's called a destination charger, which is essentially your 220 charge. It's the same charger that you have at home. So let's look at destination chargers in this area. So the gray is destination charging. So there's some up here, there's some in the middle, and there's some here. No charging out here. Again, and if you're doing ride share, or if you're doing food delivery in any of these markets with an electric vehicle, you have no place to charge your vehicle. This is the problem with the electrification of the gig economy. In markets like this, in markets where there aren't chargers for over a hundred miles, it's not going to happen. Now, well, you could say, okay, John, um, you don't have to charge at a Tesla charging station. Well, that's, that's true. You don't have to. All right, so let's take a look at ChargePoint here. Now, this is a map of ChargePoint, same approximate area. Yes, there are a number of level two chargers here going up and down a major highway. But once you get out here in these spaces, if your charge is low, you're stuck. So the Kia Niro is be becoming fairly popular. So if you're above a 22 kilowatt charge rate, they're saying here that you're going to get up to 80% in approximately 55 minutes. So it's 55 minutes to get this vehicle fully charged. That's an hour that you're not earning. Now, granted, if you're only doing food delivery and you hit a slow spot, that works out great. You can get a fairly good charge. But look, if, if you look, it takes a while. It's going to slow you down. It's going to slow down the number of deliveries that you can do. It's going to shrink your range. Again, now if you're doing ride share, this becomes even more difficult because you're dealing with ranges and you're going into locations. Now, remember, I'm specifically talking about a market like mine where the chargers are spread out. You can end up dropping someone off somewhere in the middle of nowhere, literally, and it could be an hour before you can get to a charger. You could drive 50, 60 miles before you can get to a charger of any kind. Now, of course, you always have the option of pulling into a gas station or something like that and plugging in, but that charging time is slow. It's really, really slow. So this is going to have to change if these companies want to electrify all the vehicles on their platforms. These kinds of things are really not going to work out very well because, let's face it, you're going to lose time on the road. You're going to have issues with charging your vehicle. And if every vehicle out there in the fleet is electric, guess what? All the charging stations are going to be used up as well. Those are just my thoughts on electrifying the gig economy. This is part three. I hope you watch the other parts as well. I'll make sure that there are links to those videos on the end screen. Until next time, my name is John from Ride Upstate, reminding you that just because you're in a small market doesn't mean you need to settle for small profits. Bye.